This video is brought to you by Squarespace, but more on the sponsor on the later part of this video. Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to Jay Ziyagi, where I talk about my story, my experience and journey in audio. Today, we're talking about a mistake that I made recently. And yes, we're talking about a purchase that was impulsive. And that is the Class A 15 power amplifier. Now, this amplifier is interesting because it's been produced since 1994 to 2008. So it is a vintage unit and you can only get it in the used market. And that's exactly how I got it. I was looking on the Canuck Audio Mart, which is a platform where you can look at used gear and purchase it. I've had tremendous success. So if you haven't used it before, consider using it. It is a very nice place to get nice discounts on used secondhand gear. And so this was no exception. It popped up on a Monday night and I grabbed it immediately because it was at a good price and I was very, very happy to purchase it. Turns out the seller was also a friend of mine. Hey Bernard, thanks. Now Class A is a reputable brand and they've been around for quite a long time. They, today, if you were to buy a Class A amplifier, it's considered a high-end product and back then it was as well. Today, it would cost you a heaps amount more of money than what I spend on this Class A amplifier if you were to look for a Class A modern amplifier. The Class A15 is a 60 pound amplifier that is about mid-sized and it is outputting 175 watts into 8 ohms and more than double 375 watts into 4 ohms or about there. Now, most of the time when I buy vintage units or used gear, I buy it to try it, make maybe, maybe make a video on it and then, you know, just sell it again, repeat and rinse, and that's part of the fun to experience all this. But with this unit, I'm telling you, I may be looking for a another one because this can be bridged into mono, which allows this to output now 700 watts into eight ohms and a whooping 1,200 watts into four ohms. Not that I need that power, but I would love to experience these in mono. So if you have a black pair, because these came in silver and black, if you have a black one, then please consider selling it to me. My email is in the description below. Anyways, before I talk to you guys about the speakers I've tried and there's a secret reason as to why I love this so much and the matching that I've used, I'll share all that with you. But before that, I would love to share with you the sponsor of this video because this video would have not been possible with that, without that sponsor and that is Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform to build your online presence and run your business. I used to run and manage three websites for three different businesses, one of them being a hi-fi store, and guess what? They all used Squarespace. I asked those businesses what they liked about Squarespace and it mainly came down to three main points. Number one, they really liked the custom templates. Squarespace has one of the most diverse custom templates to fit any business model. This means less money and money spent on creating a website from scratch. Number two, they said it was easy to use. Squarespace is intuitive and easy to use for someone with little to no experience building a website and managing it. Number three, they said it makes selling easy. These days, it's all about e-commerce and standing out and Squarespace makes selling online easy for both the customer and the business business owner with email campaigns, SEO tools, and analytics. So if you're interested, head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready, go to squarespace.com slash jiyagi to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. So first of all, this is a still a vintage unit and it does have that vintage like sound, which means that even though Class A is known to be detailed, balanced, and quite, quite rather neutral and a reference sound, this unit has a balanced sound with a nice bit of warmth added to the chain. So the bass is quite tight, quite punchy, quite dynamic. And the stereophile reviewer that reviewed this said, you know, it compares to higher end units at the time. In fact, if you convert to what was sold at the time, this unit was at the time 3000 US dollars. Now, if you convert that to today's date and put it into this inflation calculator, then you get a pretty interesting value, which is about $6,000 in today's market. Now, the reason I did this interesting calculation is because when I first heard this amplifier, I was in total disbelief. It sounded just that good. Now, I have no idea why Class A or other amplifier companies won't make something like this today, but I also understand that it will be much more expensive, around $6,000 or so, for a performance like this. Now, you do have to admit that the power amplifier or speakers haven't you know, found a new innovation in a long time. Most of the amplifiers and speaker design has been done a long time ago, and most of the things that have changed are just the upgraded parts and improved parts over time. 
So with that being said, driver technology and stuff have, have improved in speakers, but with amplifiers, it is still same schematics, same technology that's been used over and over. Now, just like this, Class A 15 is a Class AB amplifier, and I love the fact that it's not vintage enough that it has a balanced input, because if it's too vintage, sometimes you don't have that option. It has both balance and RCA inputs, which is great because I love to run balanced cables to my power amplifiers because sometimes I run longer cables from my rack, my preamplifier to my power amplifier. So this is a great thing that I love about Class A is that they have balanced inputs. Now, in terms of sound, it's an overall balanced sound, but not quite totally neutral. So what does that mean? So there's a clear difference to me when I say there's a difference between neutrality and balanced sound. So neutrality to me is like a very flat line, right? Just neutral. Balance is what it basically sounds like. There's the bass, mid-range, and treble, but nothing is overtaking in anyone's place. So mid-range and high frequency is equally dominant as it is with the bass. So overall, it's a balanced sound, not totally flat, but it is dynamic, it has contrast, it's fun. So with Class A, I would say that it has a pretty balanced sound with a little bit of warmth added to the mid-range and it has dynamics as punchiness while it has a little bit of that sparkle on the top end. So I would say it maybe in terms of coloration has slightly, slightly a increase in bass and high frequency region, but not enough to say that this is a V-shaped sound. Overall, is it still a balanced and pretty neutral sound? I wouldn't imagine anyone listening to this amplifier and calling it colored or overly warm or overly bright. But what impressed me the most is the fact that the soundstage and imaging and depth on this amplifier was equal, if not greater, than some of the modern amplifiers I've been playing around with, like the Denafrix Thalo. Now you guys know how I feel about the Denafrips Thalo. I love it, and sometimes I love it even more than the Denafrips Apollo, which is a powerhouse and a much bigger amplifier. In fact, I love the Denafrips Thalo so much that I even compared it to the Luxman. While it's not close to the Luxman, I'd said that the overall sound signature is quite close, but the, the technical performance in depth and sound stage and all that kind of stuff, still better on the Luxman. However, the overall tonality, the overall balance, the overall sound signature of the Class A might be different from the Luxman and the Thalo. However, the little sparkles, the little details, the little imaging, the depth, the, the perception of space was just incredible on the Class A. Now I'm very careful to say this because Luxman is a much better piece. It is a much more over-engineered piece and a much more expensive piece. But in terms of sound staging and imaging, I very much loved the Class A and I would put it in similar, if not in the same category in terms, in terms of imaging capability as well as sound staging capability, which is quite impressive if you think that this unit cost literally 1 20th of the price of the Luxman. That is crazy to think about. So while, yes, there's a diminishing re return with the Luxman and all that kind of stuff, Class A, this unit in today's market, like I said, will be about $6,000 with the inflation calculator, which kind of makes sense. This is a performance that I would expect in today's market around that price range because it's just that good. Now there is a bit of a trick to it though. Now this is a vintage unit. Now I have to admit that the preamplifier I was using is a modern preamplifier. I'm not a total fan of many vintage preamplifiers. Obviously I have used some vintage preamplifiers that I love, but I'm not a total fan of vintage preamplifiers in general because they used to have this lack of dynamics with some vintage preamplifiers. I feel modern preamplifiers have come a long way. Now with this being said, with modern preamplifier matching a vintage amplifier is something that's done classically by experienced audiophiles and I've done this in the past many, many times with great success. And it's the same thing here. While the Class A, I have no idea how it will sound with a vintage preamplifier or the matching preamplifier that's meant to be paired it up with. With the Denafrips Hades preamplifier, which is a modern preamplifier, it was just a phenomenal pairing. Now, 
like I said, I've tried it with multiple other preamplifiers that's out of this price bracket, but I just thought the Denifrix Hades was the right price range to pair it up with something like the Class A15 amplifier I have in terms of price that I you know paid out of my pocket. And from my educated guess, and this is totally educated guess, using a vintage preamplifier may make the Class A amplifier a little bit more warmer, lusher, but lack in detail and a little bit more dynamic contrast. And that's been my most consistent thing that I've experienced with vintage preamplifier matched with vintage amplifiers. But in this case, where I'm matching with a modern preamplifier with a vintage amplifier, we're getting a nice balance between musicality, dynamic contrast, and that warmth that is provided by a vintage amplifier. Now, I'm so surprised by the sound signature and the presentation in soundstage with this classy amplifier, so much that I started comparing it to some of the tube amplifiers I have, like the Line Magnetic and the Wilsonton 300B. Now, while both of these tube amplifiers have a larger soundstage and more holographicness, the Class A to me almost sounds like a tube amplifier, even though it's a Class AB solid state amplifier. So it has that warmness, it has that velvety sound that you would experience from a tube amplifier, and that holographic soundstage is still existent on the Class A, which is something that I don't experience with modern amplifiers as much these days. And that's one of the reasons I love the Thalo very much, because it has that holographic soundstage, much like the tube amplifier, like I said in that review of that amplifier. So overall, I love the Class A, I love the experience I had with it, and I paired it up with multiple speakers to just have a blast. I played any music that came into my playlist from rock, metal, jazz, vocals, and it just all handled it beautifully. Now the exception was that when I paired it up with the Kef LS50 Metas, even though the Class A had enough power to drive it, the upper mid-range wasn't the perfect match. It still sounded amazing, don't get me wrong. But there's a clear reason why I prefer Hegel with Kef still, because of the fact that the Kef upper mid-range is still bothersome to my ears, at times it can get slightly fatiguing and bright. Now while the Class A doesn't totally take care of that, it does partake in that warm nature in the mid-range, which does help with the overall fatigue and you know kind of smoothing out that upper mid-range. But it doesn't do it enough to where I can listen to Kef LS50 Metas fatigue-free for hours on end. In fact, the upper, upper range, the high frequency on the Class A is quite sparkly and quite detailed with a modern preamplifier so that it doesn't you know, feel like it's like a rolled off amplifier that you would experience from some vintage amplifiers. Now I've paired it up with Bocard S400 Mark II as well as the KLH Model 5. And with the KLH Model 5, I could hear things behind me again, onto the side, something that I don't quite experience with other bookshelf speakers or smaller speakers. The scale was much better and this punch and dynamics on the KLH Model 5 was just on par with the Denafrip Stalo. Now this really speaks volume to the Denafrip Stalo as well because it's an amplifier that is under $6,000, again with that inflation calculator which is, again, a hypothetical guess, but that is where I would categorize both the Denafrip Stalo and the Class A in terms of performance alone. And again, with my beloved Bacard S400 Mark IIs or my Sonos Fiber Electamator 3s and so on, it all sounded very, very good. Again, great dynamic contrast, nothing to really complain about, nothing really pops out at you because it's a balanced sound. But what again impressed me the most is the soundstage, the depth, and imaging. Now there's one thing that I don't like about the Class A and it is the binding post. Now, according to stereophile reviews that I've read, it tells me that it is a silver plated nut that you twist, but it's one of those things that you have to use a tool to turn and you can't have a banana plug. You have to have a spade or some sort of bare wire so that you can just go in there and manhandle and use tools. Now thankfully I have this nice tool here that I can easily use that was included with the amplifier that I will be including if I ever do decide to sell this amplifier, but I don't think I will for a very long time. Um, at least not now because I'm enjoying the heck out of it. But anyhow, I enjoy this amplifier very much. Don't have too much complaints with it other than the old looking binding pulse, but that's expected of a vintage unit. And uh, that's pretty much it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope this video was helpful and entertaining and possibly looking at used gear is a very good option and vintage units 
give you a very good sound and a great experience to compare it with modern amplifiers. Because clearly, vintage amplifiers do certain things that modern amplifiers don't today. So I think kind of exploring that is a great option. So I hope that kind of helped you out. And if this video, again, was entertaining and fun to you, then click that like button and it helps me out tremendously without costing you anything. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Until next time.